16, verse number 30 through 31. First King chapter number 16, 30 through 31. Would some other wrong person back there that's not doing something grab David and, and you see she trying to uh, take care of all of those babies. Some of y'all could be a little bit more helpful than what you are. I hear you speak. That ain't my baby. Don't have to be. We talking about we got, we love each other and we see the different uh, things that we know how to deal with kids. Some of y'all can help out. The Bible said that the elderly women, they ought to admonish the young women in the things of the Lord, how to deal with the husband and with the children. And some of, the, some of it ain't in conversation. Some of it is in demonstration. Amen. Mm -hmm. I know we, we couldn't get no amens. We amen. lost our breath then. Amen. First <laughs> First King chapter number 16, verse number 30 through 31, and Revelation chapter number 2, verse number 20. I taught this about two years ago, but, but I, I didn't have no kind of revelation compared to what God has showed me now. I really taught it about two years ago, but I didn't understand uh, the way I understand now. When you get there, say amen. amen. The Bible says, and Ahab, the son of Umri, did evil in the sight of the Lord. Ahab, the son of Umri, he reigned over Israel in Samaria for twenty and two years. And it came to pass, as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in sins, or in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took, watch this, he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbel, the king of Zidion, and went and served Baal, and worshipped him. Revelation chapter number 2, verse number 20. Revelations chapter number 2 verse number 20 Notwithstanding I have a few things against thee Because thou suffer that woman Jezebel Which calleth herself a prophetess to teach And to seduce my servants to commit fornication And to eat things sacrificed to idols For a few minutes on tonight I want to talk from the subject Identifying the spirit of Jezebel Identifying the spirit of Jezebel in traditional church and in religious church, there is a big era. There's a big era that's taking place. Many preachers and teachers in the body of Christ they want to attribute the spirit of Jezebel primarily to a woman. The woman called Jezebel is dead and has been dead for many, 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 many thousands of years. But the spirit is still alive and working. Somebody say the spirit of Jezebel. In order to understand the spirit of Jezebel, we must understand the name, what the name means. The name identifies the character of the spirit that was in operation in this woman. This word in the Hebrew, the word Jezebel means, watch this, not exalted. In the Hebrew, it means not exalted. And most of the time, people who are not exalted by others try to exalt themselves. That's good. Let me say it again. When other people do not exalt you or lift you up, you try to manifest where you can lift yourself up. The word Jezebel also means unmarried. But how could she be unmarried and she had a husband? The word Jezebel means unmarried. It means cohabited with Baal. Now the word cohabited means to live with as a wife and a husband. But there's no covenant. I'm going to mess you up. Now I'm going to show you something here you're going to really get mad about. When you fornicate, the spirit of Jezebel is at operation in your life. The word Jezebel means cohabitated with Baal. It means what? To live with as a wife and a husband or a husband and a wife. In Revelation chapter number 2 verse number 20 it says that Jeff, this woman who called herself a prophet she taught God people to fornicate. 
I know y'all can't handle that, can you? That's too heavy for you, ain't it? Now let me let me show you something about this spirit. Most of you think you can identify this spirit, but this spirit masquerades itself in the church as one of the saints. This spirit masquerades itself as one of the saints. Many times the spirit of Jezebel sit by us every single Sunday and we cannot identify. If you notice the Bible say this woman called herself a prophet. It means she masqueraded, she faked it, she covered herself, she made it to appear as though she was somebody that she was not. Look at the neighbor and say, who's sitting next to you? One of the things that the spirit of Jezebel does, watch this here, it masquerades itself among the saints. Do you know anybody that outside of the people who can discern them when they're outside of the church, they proclaim to be people in the spirit of five-fold ministry gifts and they are not licensed or ordained or noticed in the sight of the people of God. I have people all the time calling me saying, is so-and-so an evangelist? I say, not. Is she a prophetess? I say, nope. Because that spirit is at work in them. Because they're calling themselves someone that they are not. Don't tell me that if you have a real God man or a real God woman that they are not going to be able to identify, watch this here, with the gift of God that's in operation in your life. I need to go somewhere. Uh, 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 I need a reader. Prophet, as you go for me, go to 1 Timothy. Let me grab my glasses. I want to show you something. 1 Timothy. No, I might be able to read it myself now. I forgot I had these glasses. 1 Timothy chapter number 4. I want you to look at this. Well, I'm sitting out of them and they don't know who I am. Verse number 14. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by, uh, by prophecy, with the laying on of hands of the eldership. That's me. So how I'm in the eldership and I don't know what gift is you and I'm the one got I'm the one that gotta prophetically release it. Some of you I start you off as deaconesses knowing that you have other gifts, but I want to start you out in a place of humility so your head don't get big and you fall into the same place that the devil is. Because sometimes when we start you too high, I have many people that abuse authority uh, in this church. When, when you put them in a place uh, and it's too, it's too uh, fast, thank you Holy Spirit, it's too soon, thank you Holy Spirit, it's too soon for them that begin to abuse authority because they never operated in it. You got to be careful with authority. Authority can be very tricky. Let me see if I can go ahead and teach you this thing here. So the spirit, it masquerades itself in the body of Christ. Now, Mom, we got to really understand that it masquerades itself. It can masquerade itself even in the five-fold ministry gifts. How can I identify? You can always identify because it will always try to control. It always will try to operate in authority that's not been given. What does the word control? It means to rule. It means to govern. It means to dominate someone. Not even men prophets are supposed to control you. And we're not going to. Because we take away the free choice and the free will that God has given you when we begin to control you. What we do is ask you to come into compliance with the necessity or the necessary rules in order for us to walk into agreement. But you still have your free choice. If you don't want to, you just can't walk in that office because you're not willing to meet the criteria. We don't have a problem with that. We're not going to be mad and keeping attitudes. That's immature people. Come on now. When you get hired on a job, it's because what? You fulfill or you meet all of the necessary requirements in order to get that job. Yes. Ain't nobody saying nothing now. So one of, one of the main things, one of the main characters, uh, 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 characteristics, uh, 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 a character uh, of uh, the character of the spirit is control. Now you got to check this out. This is really heavy. Jezebel does not want to sit on the throne. She just want to control the throne. 